Today we're making ice cream bars, which are very similar to apples since they're both food on a stick. While the peel of an apple is rich in vitamins and minerals and also contains antioxidants which protect against ultraviolet radiation, the peel of the ice cream bar is rich in chocolate. We'll start by making no-churn ice cream, which is ice cream that's made in a no-churning zone. We'll add a cup of heavy cream to a roundish bowl, and now you have a decision to make. You can whip this cream or you can not whip this cream. If you whip it, it'll make a less dense ice cream and will give you more bars. If you don't whip it, you'll have more dense ice cream and it will take less work. Whatever you pick will affect the trajectory of the rest of your life, leading either to great success or ultimate failure. So choose wisely. I decided to go half and half to mitigate the possible disasters. I'm whipping this into a fury, but I'm stopping just short of full stiff peakitude. You can see that the whipped cream is a lot more volume and they end up being five or 6,000 less calories per bar. Meanwhile, we'll take a can of sweetened condensed milk and add in a teaspoon of vanilla extract, then Kang jangle that until it's well combined. Now we're gonna combine both of these gooey liquids together into one super goo to rule them all. Then pour that goop into the ice cream conformity chambers. Throw in some tree toothpicks and then slide those into the kinetic energy decreaser. If you don't have popsicle molds, that's fine. You can use literally any container that can go in the freezer, like a plastic or glass box. Throw on a lid if you have one, then throw that in the material contractor for a few hours or overnight. Now that these are all frozen, we'll do mold removal. If you use the whipped version, it's not as thick, so it won't have as much grip on the stick, so careful not to rip it from the mold lip before you give it a dip in water drips to unstick it. And don't slip it into your lips or lick it before you dip it. Mmm, ice cream bars. Now if you poured it into a box of glass or plastic, don't crack it when you extract it. Just go ahead and jack it to unpack it, but you best go back and line your basket with a sheet of wax because I f this one up to the max. Now before we can shellac them, we need to refreeze them because the outside is melted and chocolate doesn't stick very well to liquids. So back into the atom space lessener we go until they're frozen solid again. Or you can use your portable air conditioner. We're gonna get a double boiler going here and and throw in two bags of chocolate chips. Then we'll add two tablespoons of coconut oil, which will give that chocolate a nice snap when it freezes into a shell. Between the shell and the snapping, this chocolate is basically a relative of the turtle. Once that's melted, we're gonna throw it in a pint glass because it's been a tough day and you deserve a drink. And now it's time to exercise discipline because the biggest mistake you can make here is dipping too soon. Unless you want that coated chocolate sliding off the ice cream and back into the glass, then by all means, go right ahead. Otherwise, wait until it's room temperature. While you're waiting, you can power stone crush some roasted salted peanuts. This is how not to do it. How you do it is you put them inside a towel and then you crush them with love, never anger. You can also use a battering ram or really any kind of ram if you have one lying around. The preparations have been made. The table is set. And now it's time to dip. <laughs> 